Hello, and thank you for joining us for Top 5 Ways Telematics Pays for Itself. My name is Chris Ransom. I'm the Director of Sales Engineering for Verizon Telematics. I'm excited to talk to you today about this topic, and with that, I'd like to jump right in. You know, before talking about uh, the top five ways in which telematics pays for itself, I do want to talk about uh, te uh, technology adoption, in this case, uh, telematics technology adoption. You know, most innovations, whether it be a cell phone or a television or a DVR or something else, goes through uh, an innovation uh, phase that looks much like the gray line you see on this graph. Um, you see that it uh, is a bit of an S-curve where it slowly uh, escalates in terms of popularity until it reaches 100% penetration once everyone has um, that innovation. And in fact, the buyers at the bottom uh, go through stages as well, um, from innovators all the way to, to late majority and laggards. The telematics industry, after about 14 years, is about 25% penetrated. That means of the 100% of fleets that could have telematics, about 25% do already have telematics. This is pretty typical of any new innovation. And we think, we believe, we're at the bottom of that uh, really fast growth curve where the early and late majority buyers get into the market, and we end up in the five to seven year time frame with about 90 or 95 percent uh, penetration. So most of you on the phone today either only, only have partially bought into telematics for part of your fleet so far, or haven't at all yet and are thinking about it, obviously. Um, <clears throat> we really think you're part of this early or late majority, uh, and we're looking forward to um, working with you over the next five or seven years. You know, we, we think that uh, most people who are thinking about telematics really are thinking about it for two main reasons. Um, the, the first and, and most obvious reason is what we call location management. Uh, our industry also goes by the t uh, term GPS, which is really all about location management. Where are my vehicles? Where were my vehicles? Where are my workers? Where were my workers? Um, and so this has been uh, long the standard uh, for telematics. Uh, as part of telematics, location management, really good reason to get telematics. I want to know where my vehicles are and were. Uh, also, over the last three or four years, becoming more popular is the idea of driver management, managing driver behavior, whether it be idling, speeding, uh, or unauthorized use of vehicles, or just how hard do they drive those vehicles. Very popular, and I think most people, when they think about telematics, are really thinking about uh, one of these categories or both of these categories, as you should. You know, I'd like to posit that there's a third category equally important to location and driver management that we're going to call vehicle management. How healthy is the vehicle? Are there any trouble codes on the vehicle? What are the meter readings real time and directly from that vehicle? How well does that vehicle do in terms of miles per gallon? What's the total utilization? Does that vehicle need roadside assistance? And things like that, integration with your fleet management software, for example. Uh, we believe that this, this third pillar, this vehicle management pillar, um, is what makes telematics uh, excessively valuable to you, as if location management and driver management weren't enough, and they are. To add that vehicle management piece makes telematics that much more valuable. You know, before I dive into what the top five are, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, effective telematics implementation. You know, I sense that many organizations are reticent to pull the trigger on telematics uh, because of employee reaction. Uh, employees are nervous about Big Brother, and therefore uh, employers are nervous about Big Brother. But there are some best practices that we've gleaned for introducing and messaging, uh, and they're really around being transparent and goal-oriented with that messaging. First, we always advise our customers to be open and honest about the fact that the organization's decided to implement telematics. Secondly, explain the expected results. Employees want to make the organization better, just like you do. Explaining the results to them will help them buy in. And third, if you have a vehicle use policy, tie telematics into that policy. I've got more information on this on my next slide. I think this is an important part of the process. And finally, over-communicate about the telematics implementation. You know, I was talking to a fleet manager a couple weeks ago uh, uh, who, who'd been using telematics for about three years um, and was asking him specifically about how he implemented it. And he said they held a series of employee meetings and they were not timed meetings, so they weren't supposed to last an hour or two hours. They just answered questions for these employees about telematics until there were no more questions. So they over-communicated um, what they were trying to do, answered every question, and put to bed any question that anybody had. It's not unreasonable for you to want to improve accountability through telematics, so that's a pretty normal goal. Just be open and honest 
uh, about that and what it will mean for the employees and the organization. I think you may be pleasantly surprised by the results and maybe don't need to be quite as nervous uh, as you might be uh, about an implementation and how your employees will react. You know, um, talked about the uh, vehicle use policy. I want to explain this um, in a little more detail. It's really a good idea to tie the capabilities of telematics into your existing vehicle use policy. For example, um, if you have take-home vehicles, then you probably have some, uh, something in your vehicle use policy governing use of vehicles uh, from a take-home standpoint. You can build telematics language into that policy to cover the kinds of things that telematics will measure in terms of uh, that take-home vehicle policy. The big one, the obvious one, is around the driver behavior. If you have speeding uh, or idle time policies, you can build in that telematics is going to be measuring uh, speeding and idle time to make sure that the policy is being upheld. Also, you almost certainly have something around vehicle misuse or unauthorized use of vehicles. Uh, that's something else that telematics helps with and something you can build into the policy, uh, as well as tampering with GPS devices. Um, you almost certainly uh, have some sort of uh, policy in there about tampering with vehicles, the GPS device just becomes part of the vehicle. You can build that into your vehicle use policy. You see some other ideas, some other touch points that we think uh, are a good idea to, to build in as part of your vehicle use policy if you decide to go with telematics. And these are just some ideas. As a, as a point of reference, if you Google uh, Alameda County public use, uh, excuse me, vehicle use policy, you will find uh, a publicly available uh, vehicle use policy from Alameda County who uses telematics uh, and there'll be some great information uh, on there uh, about how to integrate the GPS um, stuff into that vehicle use policy. So with it, you know, let's talk about the areas that you can get return on investment from telematics from these top five ways that we referenced before. And some of them I think are more obvious than others. For example, you've probably thought about fuel savings. You know, the obvious advantage of driving less and driving better is that you burn less fuel. And that's certainly true. It's one of the biggest areas of savings that we see from telematics. Um, and it's one that you should definitely think about. By itself, can pay for um, uh, telematics investment. In fact, people um, reducing their fuel usage simply by reducing the amount of idle time that they have uh, has, has uh, paid for telematics. So, it should be one of the most obvious. It should be one of the fastest ones you can get. Uh, and it certainly should be one that you're thinking about. Safety and liability is another big one that people think about up front. If you drive better, you certainly are going to see safety and liability benefits down the road. You're going to have fewer accidents. You're going to have fewer, fewer claims against you. Uh, with that accountability, you're certainly going to see the benefits uh, financially and otherwise uh, from telematics and safety and liability. And also in efficiency, you know, I think efficiency is often the largest category of improvement. You ought to be able to drive fewer miles, which has a significant effect on, obviously, the maintenance of your fleet. But it also, that, that, uh, that less time behind the windshield means you can do more work. Uh, or, or you can get people off the clock sooner. So we've got a lot of cases where we see folks uh, have their overtime go down. Uh, at the same time, the number of work orders completed goes up. That's not unusual uh, from our standpoint. Now, the two we have in green here uh, are in green, separate from the blue ones, because I, I think they're categories that you probably um, or maybe didn't think about. You know, I, I showed on the other slide that vehicle management is a big piece, maybe that people don't think about. And that vehicle management piece leads to some additional categories. You know, we're going to call them utilization and maintenance uh, in this case. Uh, I'll give you a couple stories uh, to illustrate some of the things people see from a utilization and maintenance standpoint. I was at one of our regional users conferences a couple weeks ago, and uh, one of the fleet managers was talking uh, to the crowd, and he said uh, they've got about 250 vehicles in their public works department, <clears throat> and they uh, had been using tele telematics for about two and a half years. And uh, he got up and said, uh, you know, by understanding the utilization patterns of our fleet, we've been able to reduce our fleet size um, by 10 vehicles. That, that's 4% of their 250. So that's not, that's not bad. It's not, a, it's not a huge number, but 4% by itself um, is fairly significant. Um, he pegged a dollar value to that because these are heavy vehicles and uh, expensive to maintain and so on. He pegged a, a value of $330,000 a year savings on that. And, and this is when he said... Um, what I think was the most compelling statement, he said, that's $330,000 that will never 
be in the county's budget again. And I think that's sort of the goal, uh, at least in the, in, the, in the public sector, but really in, in the commercial organization as well, uh, is really to take those pieces out of the budget or to do something better with those, uh, with those dollars. So we, we find that a lot, of our, uh, a lot of telematics customers do see a huge benefit from reducing their fleet size or utilizing that fleet in a better way. You know, on the maintenance side, uh, I think it's, it's pretty obvious if you idle less or speed less or uh, use your brakes uh, in a better way uh, or, or all those things, you're going to see some maintenance benefits crystallized by this other comment. A separate fleet manager at that same event I referenced uh, said uh, that they don't, <coughs> they don't really replace catalytic converters uh, at that county a anymore. And, uh, and he was talking about the fact that catalytic converters – these days, <clears throat> excuse me, are sensitive to clogging, and that if you have a trouble code in the vehicle, um, what you often get is, uh, is is those catalytic converters clogging uh, because there's some other problem with the vehicle. <clears throat> he said he uses his telematic system to immediately notify him when he's got a, a vehicle trouble code. He immediately um, fixes that problem or identifies it uh, as a problem that doesn't need to be fixed, but usually immediately fixes it. And he said the downstream effect of that is that their catalytic converters don't have a chance to get clogged by that problem, and therefore they just don't have to replace them anymore. I think that's the kind of benefit we see uh, as a result of all the other things that telematics does uh, for customers, for users, uh, and that they see all these sorts of benefits. So I'm going to say think about, if you haven't already, about utilization and maintenance sa savings in addition to all the other categories that we're talking about. You know, now I'd like to talk about some actual results that some of our uh, some fleet customers have seen that, that utilize telematics. This first one, I think, is uh, pretty obvious. What we've got is two, um, two lines uh, depicting the number of speed instances per week. So uh, in the case of the red line, 70-plus uh, mile-an-hour speed events uh, on a week-to-week -week basis. And in the blue line, 75-mile-an-hour-plus uh, speed events. And you can see in the case of this fleet, uh, when they started utilizing telematics, they were just under 270 mile an hour speeding events a week, and uh, just over 175 mile an hour speeding events. And you see what happens in the first four or five weeks uh, as they begin to see what their speed um, portrait looks like, and then begin to manage to that speed. Uh, they reduce the number of speed instances significantly. Most significantly, their 75s. They go from uh, about 110 a week to uh, 10 or less a week. They're over 70s. So they go from about 190 a week to about 80 a week. I think there's some, some additional work they can do on those over 70s. But regardless, uh, it's a huge savings for them or huge um, change for them in how they, how they operate their fleet, leading to uh, reduced fuel usage, better maintained vehicles, fewer accidents, safety and liability, all the things we talked about before. Uh, this chart actually depicts um, the average time that uh, vehicles were starting their day, this is actually a public utility uh, here in California, and the fleet manager, when he was talking to us before he, he implemented telematics, uh, he told us he really wanted to get um, all his vehicles out of the, out of the yard at 930, uh, by 930 every day. And in fact, he'd been telling them that for some time, but they had uh, four or five fleet yards. He obviously wasn't able to uh, um, take care of that himself. Um, so he actually implemented telematics on about 600 vehicles. And you can see for the first four or five weeks, uh, he's got an average time uh, vehicles leaving the yard of uh, 10 o'clock, 10, 10, uh, 9.45, 9.50. Um, and, and I think anybody can see that if, uh, if I want to leave at 9.30, but I'm leaving at 9.50, that's 20 minutes per day per vehicle on average uh, between what I want and what I'm getting. And the amount of work that can be done uh, uh, is obviously significant in that time period, especially if you take it over the accumulation of a week. Uh, not, uh, not coincidentally, he had a big backlog of work orders uh, at the same time. You can see after those five weeks, he sort of lays the hammer down, shows everybody these results, and you can see he got the results he wanted uh, after he, he proved uh, what was happening. He really got what he wanted. That 9.30 time happened, and not, uh, not coincidentally, the number of work orders he, he uh, got done uh, went down. That backlog uh, was reduced. And, and this, uh, this is not their uh, chart, but it's really similar so you, so you can see, sort of illustrate um, what can be done. 
this is uh, uh, this is a department at a county, um, and you can see uh, there were four months sampled between April and, and August uh, of last year, and you can see that they um, started out doing about 25 jobs per week per vehicle. So that's an average uh, in that department. And by the end of the sample period, they were doing about 35 jobs per week per vehicle. That's an increase of about uh, 40%. And really, it's uh, eliminating goofing off, um, making people more efficient uh, with what they're doing, and therefore getting to do more work um, that you couldn't do before. So there's that kind of wasted time or wasted miles in the fleet that you really get to squeeze out, and this is the kind of benefit that you can see. You know, there's, uh, I want to talk briefly about integration. So there's a, there's a lot of great data that comes out of telematics, but there's also great data that comes out of uh, other systems you have in place as well. So this was a fleet that actually took their HR system that people clocked into, compared it to their uh, GPS system, their telematic system, that told them when people were leaving uh, to do work. Uh, and they compared the times between when people clocked in and when they left. And they compared it by group. Uh, and, they, and you can see here that um, you know, ideally, you want people clocking in and leaving and going to work as fast as possible, like in the case of group three. Um, and you don't want what happens in group four, where people clock in and there's a long time uh, between when they actually leave and go to work. And, and the main reason for this, if you talk to them, is really um, about efficiency. They had crews the night before not stocking up the vehicles as needed for the next day, and so group four would come in and have to do a lot of work before they actually got to leave, leading to inefficiency. So that's the kind of thing they were trying to drive out of it. And my main point here is to tell you there's lots of things you can integrate your telematics data with to give you more valuable information that your telematics system alone might not be able to tell you. And certainly, you know, if you drive better and drive less, you're going to reduce the number of accidents you have. You can see in the case of this fleet, before they implemented telematics, they were averaging about 30 accidents a year on about 300 vehicles, which is about right, 10%. Some of these small accidents, some of these larger. And you can see about three or four of those every year were speed-related at-fault accidents. Um, so they wanted to reduce that. And you can see uh, when you reduce your speeding and you reduce your hard braking events uh, and, you, and you drive better, you end up with results like these, where uh, now they're down to seven or eight uh, accidents a year and no speed-related at-fault accidents. So we talked about safety and liability as one way to pay uh, for telematics. This is the corresponding uh, reduction in liability for that same fleet, right? The blue is the re re uh, liability claims, and the yellow are the claims paid. And you see they paid more than $400,000 in claims in 2008, and they're down uh, under 50000 uh, every year since. So there's, there's your return on investment uh, right there. You know, I want to summarize by saying that you shouldn't shy away from accountability. Accountability is important. It's important to make people accountable uh, and, to, and to understand what's going on in your vehicles. Don't shy away from Big Brother. We talked about some strategies to make people feel more comfortable, um, but don't shy away from it. Be, be clear about what you want. And the short-term benefits, I think, are obvious. Uh, you're really going to get a short-term benefit of less fuel used, uh, and more efficient use of the fleet and workforce, sort of immediately. And the long-term benefits, I think, are less obvious, but just as important, things like um, lower maintenance costs, a smaller fleet, so better utilization, uh, and safety and liability. And with that, I'd like to take any questions that we have. I see that we have a couple questions that came in uh, on the chat line. So uh, the first one is, is uh, asking whether or not there is um, integration between Verizon Network Fleet and AssetWorks Fleet Focus? The answer is yes, um, there is an integration. The integration point generally consists of vehicle trouble codes uh, and meter values, like odometer and, uh, and engine hours. Um, we'd love to tell you more about that. You can certainly call your AssetWorks uh, uh, representative. You can call your Network Fleet representative. Or if any of you are going to be at the AssetWorks Users Conference in a few weeks, we'll be happy to talk to you more there about what that integration um, uh, contains. All right, another question here. Yeah, asking about uh, you know how fast do do we ex do our customers generally see results from telematics? Uh, you know the answer is it, it really varies. Um, you'll see some fleets that say, hey, look, I got a return on investment on in three months, right? I paid for my telematics in three months. Some people say six months. Some people say nine months. The reality is, how much do you want to use it, right? Do you want to use it right away for um, safety and liability plus efficiency plus fuel usage? you're going to see a pretty uh, broad and uh, quick return on investment a a very quickly. 
here's what I'll say. I'll say you're going to see a return on investment very quickly. Uh, how many categories you want to see it on is really up to you uh, and how you decide to implement and roll out. So very quickly, but really time dependent. Uh, with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for your time. Appreciate you having you on here. Uh, as I mentioned before, we'd love to talk to you more about telematics so you can approach your AssetWorks or your Verizon Network Fleet rep, or we'll see you at the AssetWorks Users Conference. Thank you very much.